do this in remembrance of me. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, today we are celebrating Monday Thursday, the day of the Lord's Last Supper. Let us reflect on the three events that happened during this meal. The first one, the institution of the Eucharist. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 23, we read, The Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. To understand this, we need to go back to Exodus chapter 12 where people of Israel celebrated their first Passover. The Lord had commanded the people of Israel through Moses to celebrate the first Passover on the occasion of passing over from slavery to liberation, from slavery to promised land. The lamb without blemish was slaughtered for the household of Israel to eat together in communion. The blood of the lamb was put on the two doorposts and the lintels of the houses. That night the Lord passed through the land of Egypt and brought great disaster on Egyptians. But the blood of the lamb on the houses of Israel brought them no harm. This day became a day of remembrance for the people of Israel. This day became a day of prefiguration of their passing over from slavery to freedom. In the New Testament, Jesus becomes that lamb who brings salvation to all humanity. It is through his own blood we are saved. In John chapter 6, we read, the Lord says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. Further, he says, I am the bread that came down from heaven. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Jesus had to break himself so that he may give life us. For the forgiveness of our sins, he had to sacrifice himself on the cross. For the salvation of many, one had to die. It is through one man's wound we are healed. My dear brothers and sisters, in John chapter 12, 24, the word of God says, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Jesus became that grain of wheat which the Father dropped in this world so that by its death many were given life. One grain yielded much fruit and we are those fruits. My brothers and sisters, where did Jesus born in Bethlehem? And what is the meaning of word Bethlehem? House of bread. He was born in the house of bread so that he can feed all those who live in this household. He was born in the house of bread so that he may feed all those who are hungry for this bread. Jesus calls us to break ourselves. As he broke himself for the life of the world, he calls us to break ourselves that others may have life. And the second thing happened during this meal. Jesus instituted the sacrament of priesthood. Through the command, do this in remembrance of me. And through his life and action, he gave the church a greatest gift, gift of priesthood to continue what he had done. So my dear brothers and sisters, who is a priest? 
we have an answer for this question in Hebrews chapter 5:1 For every high priest chosen among people is appointed to act on behalf of people in relation to God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins So priest is chosen among you and set apart for a particular purpose to mediate between you and God. He is chosen to take your prayers and gifts to the Lord and bring back to the people the blessings of the Lord. In the Old Testament the high priest once a year entered the holy of holies taking the blood of goats which offers himself for the sin of people and himself but in the new testament jesus entered the holy of holies once for all not taking the blood of goats and rams but he took his own blood for the salvation of the whole world so he becomes the sacrificial victim lamb which was slaughtered for the remission of sins he becomes the lamb of god which takes away the sins of the world thus jesus the high priest is also a victim a sacrificial lamb Jesus is a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek but he has given us the gift to carry out his mission he has given this gift to the church therefore every priest acts on behalf of the eternal priest Jesus Christ and the third thing happened during this meal is the commandment of love Eucharist and the priesthood are the result of Lord's love for the humanity. Jesus' love for the humanity is the overflow of God's love for the world. In John chapter 3:16 we read, "For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life." Like the Father, the Son loved us unconditionally. Even to the point of his death he loved us he forgave us from the cross father forgive them he gave us the new commandment of love in john chapter 13 34 we read a new commandment i give to you that you love one another just as i have loved you you also are to love one another what is the difference between the new this commandment and the commandment of the old test In Leviticus chapter 19 18 the Lord said you shall love your neighbor as yourself but there is newness in what Christ gave to us we need to love as Christ loved us loving others as Christ loves Christ's love was total self giving self emptying therefore every disciple of Christ is called to love as he has loved us by giving ourselves to the others completely self empty we will be known as christians or disciples of christ by the love we have for others for the lord says in john chapter 13 35 by this all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another therefore my brothers and sisters we will be known as christ by the love that we have for others and on this day let us thank the lord for threefold gifts he gave to the holy church the eucharist the priesthood and the commandment of love let these three things become part and parcel of our life let us become christ like by following christ closely amen